This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless A Trading Frank. It's approximately 9.09 p.m. on August 7, 2019. Today is, I believe it's Wednesday. Uh, this is a strategic midweek webinar session that we uh, do to help all our members and free trial subscribers. And anyone else out there with the internet connection can hear these fantastic, resourceful, very, very precise predictive forecast on the overall markets, as you all know, uh, on the Google YouTube channel. That's Clueless A Trading, uh, uh, Clueless A Trading uh, YouTube channel. Just another quick shout out. We have a terrific Instagram channel where we highlight some of our best trades uh, of the day. And uh, you get to get a chance to see the actual options trade charts which I don't always get a chance to post on my normal real-time Twitter feed because we are guiding people through an extremely volatile market, which has always been the case. And, um, and uh, putting out options charts is not something that I have that much time for because we have alerts, we have tactical charts, we have market comments, and you guys have to basically decide what you want to do and run with it. So please. Pass the word around on the Instagram. I know many of you are following it. Many of you are still not. So I, again, as a humble Clueless A trader, ask you very nicely to go ahead and uh, follow the Instagram channel. On that note, uh, let us begin. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. And Within a matter of about five minutes, this is almost like Fed Day, you know, everyone's with bated breath, the drum rolls, the nervousness, the bunkers, the diapers, you know, just terror, absolute terrifying fear on Fed Day, with whether they're gonna cut rates or not cut rates. Well, now, days, at least for the time being, it's going to be the Chinese yuan renminbi fix, that's their currency, against the US dollar. We would like to see a fix below seven. That's seven one two eight two one US dollar. Just remember that. If we get a weaker one, I mean, sorry, a stronger one against the US dollar, that means we buy more one. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, stronger one against the US dollar. That means below seven. Then we uh, because it's an inverse correlation, right? Um, then that's good. That's when the markets ramp up. I put out an excellent article just in the last 20 minutes or so, because I'm always here to help you all guys and help myself increase my knowledge. That's what it's all about, about how every single trader, billion dollar traders, million dollar traders, thousand some dollar traders like all of us, okay, six figure, five figure, four figure traders, everyone's with any brains are tracking the one because that peg is critical. If the one is pegged against the US dollar well above seven, you will see futures which are right now down four and as uh, what is it, six and a half points, plummet down 20 within a heartbeat. This is all about a currency war. We're blaming the Chinese for currency manipulation. The Chinese are basically saying no. We're letting market forces decide where our currency should stand because the more they weaken the Chinese yuan, that means it, you know, it goes well above seven against the US dollar. That means they are getting a competitive advantage on the price of their exports to the rest of the world. Remember, the cheaper your currency, the more other nations can buy from you based on that. It also dampens the effect of the big tariffs that the Trump administration has placed on Chinese goods. All right, it's really as simple as that. Don't overcomplicate this matter, it's simple. I'm gonna write this down, okay? And write it down somewhere, not in your head, on a piece of paper. One US dollar, roughly, approximately, Seven Chinese yuan or renminbi. So simple. Watch this screen here. Above seven 
or anything above seven, markets will fall. That's going to be the to that going to be the instant direct correlation with all the asset classes. All right, the carry trade, all that stuff, global trading, boom. All right, below seven, markets. Global markets, remember, we're not only ones affected, it's also all the other Asian nations which are trading partners of the Chinese. They also get affected by a competitive devaluation of the Chinese currency. Just remember that. That means markets will rise. That's all you got to remember. Forget about the macroeconomics and try to understand all the nuances of global finance and all that stuff. I try to keep this simple. All right. Above seven, no good. Below seven, good. Can't be any more clearer than that, all right? I'm giving you a hardcore macroeconomic lesson in literally three minutes. All right, so we're waiting on that. Futures right now, we're watching it here, are down a buck 50, minus four. You see what's going on? See what's going on? Look, let's make this. Let's clean the screen out. Futures are right now moving fast and furious. We'll find out any minute now. I'm also watching it on on uh, on an app on my iPhone, and you're gonna see this here. This was today, Wednesday. Futures are right now down 250 minus 250. That means a fix should be coming out below seven. I'll find that number out in a second. Good evening, Sue. Welcome. We're watching the live. NFL games, the 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 uh, the the macroeconomic currency version. All right, this is what goes on. This is the Super Bowl. So futures are right now down 250. All right, we like that. We like that. Don't be surprised if futures just plummet down minus 20 the minute that number comes out. We are. I'm looking at my other screen. It's not showing me anything yet. Because I don't have a Bloomberg terminal. I just have regular Bloomberg that I pay for for the thing. Okay, futures are down two. See what's going on? Watch, watch, watch. There we go. That's a beautiful inverse head and shoulder. While we're waiting for this to happen, as we're seeing futures are down two, let's give it about three minutes or so. I'd like to remind everybody, everything that I walked you all through, since last week, since last Thursday's webinar, Sunday's webinar, Monday's webinar has come exactly, exactly. You can't make these things up. Not fake, real, real. Exactly as I said things were going to happen. Guys, you cannot get this type of precision forecast anywhere else. I'll stand by it. I'll say it. Multiple trades have been given. You could just play the spies, have patience and discipline. Sit, look at those hollow candles, look at the Twitter feed, sit there, buy as we dip, and make a crap load of money. You know, a long time ago, nice, 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 look at this. Futures are now only down a quarter. A long time ago, when I first interviewed on Wall Street, when my boss gave me a job at a big prestigious firm that started with JP, okay, how about that? First job. First thing I did after I started work, I actually parked a fancy car in the in the in the in the fish market, right there at the bottom of Wall Street. And one of the things he says, you know, he he took me out for a drink uh, with a bunch of other uh, uh, young guys, and he said, "You know why I hired you?" I said, "Why?" Because you were hungry. And I said, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. He goes, look, I can teach you everything about sales, about institutional research, how to deal with clients, the whole works. But what I can't teach you is passion and hunger. So, ladies and gentlemen, it kind of came back to me today. I cannot teach you guys passion and hunger and how much you want to do well for yourself, challenge yourself to, to, to beat the market, to learn so many advanced topics at Clueless Save Trading not to be just a dumb ass trader, excuse my French, just saying, oh, I just made a dollar on this, you know, that's good, to make guide, guide and health type of trades. 
and many, many other trades, Roku type of trades like tonight, as I talked about weeks ago. So I can't teach you that part. I can't change your personality. I can only teach you all the phenomenal tools that I have learned on my own with the tutelage of some of the biggest names on Wall Street who were the biggest technicians on Wall Street. And that's the only thing I can, I can, I can share with you. I can teach you the internal aspects of your amygdala, of your brain. So please remember that. I know it sounds childish and you're all grown men and women, but that's a fact. Okay. Saying all that, where are we right now? Futures are down two. I don't still have that number. What uh, about where the what the fix is? I'm going to Google it right here on my other screen. It should be a good one because futures are only down a buck fifty. We'll find out in a second. Okay, so before I get into the charts and all that stuff, okay, China sets the one midpoint at 70039 per dollar. It says weakest since April 2008, okay? Bear with me one second. That's breaking news coming on my other, other uh, on my iPhones. The one midpoint was set at, so it's slightly above seven. I'm not going to super analyze this right now, but it is slightly above seven. So the market seems still to be reacting okay, given that we don't want to be above seven, right? But futures have moved higher right now. So we'll watch it as we move along through our thing. Remember, it's not just an absolute number. There are other factors involved too. But it says here, this is the first time that the midpoint had been weaker than seven since 2008, uh, weaker than seven per dollar, but it's 7.003. So the one fixed rate right now, breaking news, has been set at 7.0039 Chinese one versus one US dollar. That means one US dollar buys seven seven Chinese renminbi, the one. Okay. So so far so good. Futures are up about two and a quarter. We're moving along. Looking good. See that? You're seeing in real life this is how inverse head and shoulders work. I call it the Texas bullhorn pattern. Will it just bust a move from here? We shall see. That's the live futures. Let's move on to a different chart. Anyone has any questions? Sue, Mike, Jody, feel free to stop and ask me. That's what you guys are here for. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. Oh, Frank? Yes, go ahead. What is the... What is your screen? I can only see the Chinese renminbi on your screen. Is that no, right? No, no, no. My screen is fully on, right? Uh, on. Uh, you should be able to. Your computer takes about a few seconds to to refresh, so you should be able to see it very clearly. Uh, Jody, Mike, can you see my screens? Yes, and I see yeah. a headline from the Standard. Headline from the standard. I'm showing you the charts right now. Is that? Let me see my audience view. Now I see the charts. Right. It takes yeah. a few. It takes a few seconds to refresh. That's why you have to have fast computers. And the cheapest way to oh. get faster, fast. Let me help you guys. The cheapest way to get faster computers is not to go out there and buy a new computer. You just have to enhance your RAM. Okay. Random access memory. If you're running at eight gigabits of RAM, it's a joke. You need to be running at 16 to 32. It costs only about two, three hundred dollars, if not less, maybe a hundred bucks, depending on what type of computer you have. It'll completely change the way your system works, both in trading and in webinars and everything. Just enhance your RAM to at least 16 gigabytes. Okay. If not, if not 
32 gigabytes, which would be rocket speed. Just remember that. So you don't have this refresh problems. You don't have any trading problems when you're updating your charts or anything. All right. So just make sure you guys do that on all your desktops and your notebooks. All right. Let's um, uh, uh, let's do this. All right. Let's do this. So first of all, when I do these webinars, it's not to pat myself in the back and say, oh, my God, you know, this is so right. This is so right. But I have to admit when I'm dead right. You know, these are very difficult markets. You hear some of the biggest names in the business just uh, constantly saying, we don't know where the market's going. We don't know where the market's going. You hear that all day long, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Well, we know where the market's going. We know where the markets can come down to. We don't know exactly some of the unknowns. And the unknowns are a tweet out of President Trump coming out at any given moment or where the Chinese PBOC, the People's Bank of China, is going to set the one fix. Those are two things we don't know. But we do know what the charts are telling us. We know what the downsides are. And we know what the upsides are. And we know that during the day, I have shown today was a very powerful day. It was a fantastic day to make money. And anyone who didn't make money, well, I don't know. I know all I can say in a nice way is seek help. I don't mean mental help. I can definitely refer people to uh, mental health clinics if they, you know, if they really need their help. But what I mean by saying is seek help. Reach out to me. Say, Frank, I need, you know, I need some ACS coaching. What should I do? I'll walk you guys through it. I do these free webinars to walk people through. I do the ACS sessions on Saturday and Sunday morning. This is one of the first summers I haven't had a time to really take a long vacation. Because to me, God has given me every day for a vacation. I'm a pro independent trader every day is a vacation a stressful vacation sometimes but it's a vacation all right so every day that i live i thank god and i say thank you for letting me live that's a vacation all right so this was a, but a, all kidding aside um the bottom line is that uh, futures are right now up five you can see that happening right here as i speak to you all so um so bottom line is that seek help because if you cannot make money especially with this type of absolutely amazing precision charts where the markets are down 500 points and end up. And you could just track these charts with pinpointed every directional move. Then I can sure, certainly tell you that, um, you know, just do it. Just help yourself. Just help yourself. And on your own, I know for a fact, on your own, most of you do not, and I mean in a nice way, do not have the ability, and you all are smart people and successful in your own businesses and whatever you do, careers. But in this business, most of you on your own won't make it. You will need to get precision guidance and coaching. It's a fact. So you can keep doing the same thing over and over again, but when these markets get this difficult, and it will be more difficult going forward. I said this years ago. Then you need to seek help. Okay, enough of that. So reach out to me and we can talk. The advanced coaching sessions are available to everybody for a small fee. Sign up for them. Try to help yourself. All right, let's get into the charts, guys. So this is a very precise chart. As I mentioned to all of you uh, many, many times, that when we have extreme moves on the market, the Fibonacci retracements work almost 100% of the time, almost 100% of the time. You can say that about many times. Fibonacci retracements don't even matter when the markets are moving sideways and all that stuff. But when you get these massive drawdowns and massive draw ups, the Fibonacci retracements are the most important tool in my book. And I've helped you guys make money off these type of charts. So bottom line is this is a 15 minute chart. This was the drop from uh, 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 the, the, uh, the, this was the first one fix, I believe. Yes. And the markets dropped. So this has a slightly different Fibonacci levels than the next chart that I'm gonna show you. But you can see here that the 50 Fibonacci level is where the markets are like a magnet wanna come to. So we crashed and burned. And I told you guys, scale in, scale in, scale in. I didn't say get a second mortgage on the house, or you know, steal your grandma's money, uh, or, or whatever the case may be. You know, dig in and get that uh, you know treasure chest and put everything in the market. If you did, 
oh boy, you made a crap load of money. But you need to be in it. You need to put some money in. So bottom line is that was a thousand point drop or almost a thousand point drop. And and then the markets went straight up. Well, overall straight up in between volatility because it's a 15 minute chart. And it almost came close to this big, thick, dotted blue line, which is the fifth, uh, the, 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 the 50 fifth, the fifth, fifth, 50. Okay, Fibonacci 50 level. This is just the law of nature. Like every action has equal and opposite reaction. Well, uh, you know, the great math Italian mathematician Fibonacci devised these, you know, these are law of numbers. They were actually designed to measure uh, um, some other stuff. I can't remember right now. Just read up on Google. So the bottom line is that that is exactly what happened. So we came close to it, came down. Now we have an inverse head and shoulder here playing out, and there is a high probability we are going to get to, to this number, which is the 50 fib, which is, bear with me one second. I can't believe these junk calls are coming in at 9.33 in the evening. Okay, um, and the 50 fib is right here at 28.97. That means it's roughly about 15 S&P points. Well, if you wake up tomorrow morning with 15 handles on the S&P 500, then um, I can assure you, you're going to feel pretty damn good about yourself if you have spy calls, right? And it simply means that um, it simply means that we are we we moved up 15 handles from where we are as we speak. That's 15 handles, 15 S&P points. How nice does it feel to wake up with spy calls? 15 S&P points, showed you guys that repeatedly. So that's pretty much it. Now, once we hit the 50 FIB level, we'll see the reaction. Well, my gut tells me we're gonna hit this, we're gonna pull back a little bit. Barring any other unforeseen black swan type of events, such as a President Trump tweet, such as some harsh comment coming out of China, such as a Federal Reserve governor, you know, saying something really tough, like, no, we're not gonna cut rates anymore. You know, stuff like that. Uh, the normal, technical cycle tells us we're going to complete this pattern. That's why you have these two big red arrows here. And I'm sure everyone understands that because honestly speaking, even a child can read this chart. But the basis behind it is what I'm explaining. So if this happens, it'll happen by Friday, which reminds me, tomorrow morning, six o'clock, I'm leaving my house with one of my dogs, well, two of my dogs, but one of my dogs is getting major dental work done. All right, he's one of the rescues. The poor guy has eight teeth left and probably he's going to lose like another four. All right, but he's the cutest little thing and he's very happy with everything and with life. So I'm dropping him off at the vet and that's about 45 minutes from here. It's, it's a special a vet who does all, all, all the dental work, not the regular one. So I might be a little bit late. I don't know. Just letting you all know. All right, I will be on my iPhones and stuff, but I'm going to drop him off. Uh, the intakes around eight, and I should try attempt to go back, uh, get back here by 9:30, barring Jersey traffic. You tell me. So just letting you guys know. So say a little prayer for my little Bruno. So uh, that's the one with the big flappy ears. Everyone follow us on Polo the Toy Palm. You know, love all our pets. Three dogs, three cats. The best traders in the world. So all right. So that's where we are. So let's just keep it simple. By the time we reach 29:34, 29:35. On the E-minis, and I'll show this to you on the S&P 500, I, I, I'll tell you, they, they're they going to unleash a big fat sell program. No question about it. If they don't, good, we're going to be happy. But I'm just letting you guys know. So the way to play this market is to trade these charts and take staggered profits as we move along. That's all. But if you're not in it, you're done. Because we could be in for a pretty substantial rally within the next, it already started. I mean, we were we are up almost uh, how much we're up like 500 plus points or more or so. I don't I don't have the exact number in my head. Just since Monday, what date was Monday? Monday was the uh, fifth. Uh, okay, yeah, since Monday. All right. So stop listening to. I'm not saying don't listen to some of them to the, the, the talking heads on TV who are full of garbage, if you ask me, most of them, and uh, what the heck they're talking about. 
follow these charts, make them your friends, and make money. Simple. I don't want to make this complicated. Moving up. Futures are up seven and a half right now. You're going to see that this is happening right now. Let's move on to the next chart. Please stop me with any questions you have. So this is, uh, this is the one I like a lot. Remember, my charts are constructed to be extremely, uh, extremely uh, uh, precise. And the structure is anyone who l learns how to read this, they are not going to panic, sell at the wrong times. They're certainly going to be buying at the wrong time. They'll certainly take money off the table on big drawdowns or reduced positions that I asked you guys to do before the Monday crash and before the Fed meeting too. And um, and the key is you just have to, you know, you just have to understand it. There's nothing that difficult uh, with these charts. It's a matter of execution. So I like this chart a lot because it's a more broader view. And we are seeing that uh, in, in this particular case, we have crossed over the 50 Fibonacci level, which is 28.55 on this one. And uh, you can see that where we are. So on this chart, which goes back a little bit more, this goes back to this goes back to the 31st of July, right? Right here, 31st of July. Remember that where you set your reference point is where your levels are going to be. I'm sure you guys understand that. So this is a much more zoomed out view. This is from 31st of July, August 1st. This one is recent. This one is showing showing us um, this one is showing us the 4th of August, right? 4th of August. So this one we have passed over the 34 day moving average. Uh, sorry, not 34 day moving average. I mean the 50 day 50 Fibonacci level. You can see what's going on. I like this a lot. It's telling me this is a big reference point. The markets now have a magnet. That magnet is 2905 in this particular time frame. That 2905, honestly speaking, we get there. We could get there by tomorrow. You can see this is a large pattern symmetry. I know some of you, and I know exactly who who uh, some of these members are, who are who have gotten around to understanding these tactical charts, and they are trading their books and their positions far more robotically than they ever have in their lives. I'm not going to name names, but I know exactly who they are. Well, some of them, at least the visible ones. All right, we have a, quite a few other members who are invisible. That is fine with me. So, bottom line is this is where we're going that's the first pattern completion the full pattern com the second pattern completion comes in at 2919 and the final pattern completion comes in above and there's somewhere around 2934 this is where i believe they're going to unleash some very large sell program and this should bring us into the middle of the month what happens in the middle of the month the market croaks don't forget that don't forget that that's just the way it goes However, next week, the 16th, is monthly options expiration. We should get a bunch of days at around the uh, give or take plus mine, you know, I would say, you know, before the 16th, we'll get some very powerful days. We get a powerful move into this move, let's say by Monday or Tuesday, take down long positions, reduce your long positions, keep some swing trades, of course, stay engaged with the market, but reduce large long positions, period. That's it. That's simple trade management. And if it happens before that, reduce your position because this is where we are targeting to go to. Let's look at the next chart. Everyone with me so far on how to manage their trades? Okay, yeah. sounds good. Sounds good. Let's move on because I'm trying to cover a whole bunch of things at one go. Now, this is a one hour chart. This gives you a more zoomed out picture. When you look at this, you're like, wow, there's so much room to move higher. I say no. Just because it looks like there's so much room to move higher doesn't mean anything to a tactical trader. We are looking at patterns. So let's look at patterns. This pattern completion, first pattern completion comes in at 29.12, right there. Second pattern completion comes in, which I think is the big one at 29.52. That's why I have these red kind of dices. I mean, the blue dices there. Just wanted to put in a little flavor. Okay. Now these are this is for swing traders. 
This is not for day traders, mind you. The day trading charts are the 15 minute charts. By now, all of you should know that. These are the charts you can manage your trades, make a killing. And I mean a killing. The spike calls I asked people to buy, let's say the 288, they were 73 cents at the close, at the, at the low. At the low. They were at a buck 17 when the market opened down and started to crash. They went to 73 cents. They ended the day. They went as high as $2.60. How do you like that? How do you like that? 260 divide, and I'm looking at the lowest denominator, let's say 75 cents. That's 246% on your money in one day. And they closed at two bucks. So let's say you bought it at a dollar and it was at two bucks. That's 100% in your money. Just, just by being disciplined, futures are up eight right now. Um, just being disciplined and following these charts. Stop just looking at the frigging Dow Jones Industrial Average and freaking out. Try to understand my charts. Try to understand the VIX. I really pamper all my members and traders because the amount of content that I'm putting out there on a systematic basis is nothing but free cash in your hand. Literally, on a daily basis. How you act on it and stuff, that's your business. I can't change, I can't change your methodology. I can't change your personality. I can't change your hunger or your passion. That's up to you. I can give you the finest tools in the world. You guys do what you need to do with it. I have to keep on stressing this because I see over and over again, weak minds, weak traders for no fault of their own. Yes, the big fault of their own because they don't want to learn. Keep on losing money. It doesn't bother me. It saddens me. End of story. So the key is the final pattern completion is 29.34. And you, you you know all that stuff. So looking at this picture here, this is when the big drop started, right? Do I think we get up there? Personally speaking, I don't. I don't. Now, why do I say that? Because I feel that there are certain, unless we get a, some sort of China deal, which I think is going to happen. They're playing a, hard ga a hardcore game of poker. And in the meantime, they're talking. That's why the Michael Phil, uh, Philby, What's the guy's name? That guy said one of the smartest guys I heard on TV. He's a senior advisor to President Trump's administration on China affairs. Some of the stuff that you're talking about, I'm like, this guy's smart. And to me, make America smart again is my slogan. All right? We're already great. We need to make America smart again. And I was like, man, this guy's fantastic. So I put it up there. I put it up there. And when you get smart, you make, you know, you become great. That's the way I look at life. All right? So, um, and, and I want you guys to read that because you made a lot of sense. So all this back and forth, name calling and stuff, you know, that's what Donald's used to. I mean, we all know that by now, right? Well, I knew that years ago before you even knew who he was. You guys knew who he was. Um, he's brash. That's his style. And uh, I'm brash too. <laughs> I'm trying to piss people off. I don't care. So bottom line is I'm trying to help. So this guy was brilliant. But then he said a couple of other things and read that or read the listen to that uh, quick CNBC video that I put up there in the middle of the day when I said this, you know, very smart and uh, uh, man, you know, advisor to uh, advisor on the China affairs. And and you'll know what I'm talking about. So key is we we, we could get a, uh, a preliminary deal. And if that happens, uh, then we are going to hit the highs again. We will. And in the meantime. Keep in mind, so this is your swing chart. Keep this in mind. But there are big obstacles on the way, what we call resistances. I would say at, at around 2,900, they're going to try to do a smackdown. What's a smackdown? You know, a quick smackdown like that is good for 100, 150 points. So you need to basically manage your positions. That's something you guys have to learn in your own. You know, I can't help you with that. I can show you where they're going to come in. Um, and this is where I think the markets can get to, 2,952. And that'll be beautiful. That'll be beautiful because the S&P 500 closed at 28.83. 29.52 is roughly 70 points higher from when we closed that. 70 handles, it's roughly about 450 to 500 points on the Dow. I'll take that. So will you guys. Don't get super greedy, all right? These are tactical markets, right? When you start to feel too good about yourself, this kind of stuff happens like it did to us last week. But then we adapted. Now, there's a lot of dogmatic shorts out there. Um, those guys are still pressing the shorts. So as long as they keep on pressing the market, 
in a hard way, in other words, through the bearish positions, we should get short squeezes that we constantly keep on getting because the dogmatic shorts constantly keep on believing that the US can never move forward and that they keep on pressing the market, right? On the short side. So let them get blasted. That's when you get these short covering rallies. Now, this stage of the move, if we get above 29, 12, 29, 15, is going to be very quick. So just keep that in mind. It's going to be very quick. Let's move on. The next one is um, is your uh, uh, daily chart. So the daily chart is showing us, and uh, sorry, this is the one hour too. This is the this is a one hour chart on the S and P 500. I've already covered that. No reason to go through it. I don't know how that appeared here. Now this is the one I find interesting. One second. Where is the daily? I'm looking for the daily. Hold on. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. That's why. This is the daily chart. Bingo. So here's your daily chart that I walked you all through, and I said this: if this happens, this will happen. Well, this is happening. I told you nothing stays out of the lower Bollinger when you get a Bollinger overshoot for more than two days. Well, guess what? The first day it attempted to get back into the Bollinger. Massive bullish engulfing candle. Bullish compared to these candles, not bullish compared to this one. This was a massive fallout out of the Bollinger Band. The Bollinger Band in this particular case, as you all know, is this, right? The blue bands. So it fell out. Everybody's just running for the hills. Nobody wants to touch anything. Everything's been given away for free as in basement, bargain basement prices. And we said, let's get in there. Forget the internals and stuff. Let's talk about the Bollinger Bands here. You can play this on any stock too. You very seldom in the financial market see this type of massive overshoot of the lower Bollinger. I even highlighted that for you in multiple charts. It happened here. It happened here. It happened here. Well, guess what? We're back in the Bollinger. Simple. Let's keep this simple. Don't need to be a rocket scientist on the 80th floor of Goldman Sachs, all right? You need to be a rocket scientist here at Clue to Say Trading. I'm giving you the rocket science. The 50-day moving average right here is around 29.38. Give or take a few points, pretty much exactly to where I say they're going to smash, where they're going to hit the market again. You fall this hard out of the lower, uh, out of the Bollinger, you fall back in. The short starts panicking a little bit, and it goes towards the 50-day moving average. Whether we're going to cross over the 50-day moving average or not, I don't know yet. Well, you know, all I know, we're getting towards there one step at a time, which can generate 100 to 200 to 300 percent on your spy calls, not to mention other stocks, which move with the market. All right. So. That's where we're going. Now, if it breaks out of that, then we're going to hit the mid Bollinger, the red line. The 34 day moving average, and we'll see what happens after that. But right now, we are in this it's not a dead cat bounce. This is a reflex rally. You know, you hear on TV, I hear all the time, well, it's a reflex rally, it won't last. Well, idiots, why don't you talk about the internals, which can tell us whether or not these reflex rallies can last? But they never tell you that. You've heard that on CNBC and, and other channels. So forget the garbage out there. Focus on these amazing tactical charts. Not the first time. Many of you who have been with us for a long time, you know through the most difficult market situations, I have stood by and guided people to do what they needed to do. Whether it be June, whether it be December 24th, you never see me hide like a coward. Because life, God didn't create us to be cowards. Be brave. Make yourself proud. Make your families proud. Because you guys are a lot smarter than you think you are. Massive tale. I mean, what's so difficult to understand? Then we had this today, which was also 500 points down. Did I freak out? No, I kept on showing you all the different charts on the VIX and all this. Then we have another tail right there. 
what are these tails? They're big short covering programs, billions and billions of dollars worth. This is where we are right now. So best case scenario, we get to about 2938. I do not want to over explain this simple matter. Stochastics. So we follow this very closely, right? Sure. So as long as this is creeping higher, we are good. By the time it gets up here, it's time to put out a couple of shorts, buy some VIX calls, or just sit aside. Now, what we haven't seen yet is the MACD turning. I can see a little bit of a turn, but it's not turn yet, at least on, the, uh, on this investing.com chart. It starts to turn. This starts to turn. We are going to have a multi-week rally. Simple. Don't overthink. Please don't overthink. Overanalysis paralysis has been a losing game. Analysis paralysis. Now let's take a go, go out a little bit further. Let's take a look at the weekly, like what the heck's happening on the weekly. And on the weekly chart, we are still pointing down. So what is this telling you? After we get towards those levels, unless the weekly stochastics start to call around, we are going to go lower, which means after we hit these levels that I pinpointed to you all, right? These major support levels, 2950, 2940 on the S&P 500 or so, we could get a very sharp move down to create a significant double bottom. Tony Dwyer mentioned the same thing today that I explained to you guys last week. Tony Dwyer is one of the finest technical analysts out there. Look him up. Actually worked with him for a bunch of years because he was at one of my firms I worked with. He's with Canaccord Genuity right now. That's my brother-in-law's firm in Canada. Excellent, excellent company, Canadian financial uh, uh, giant. And he's with Canaccord Genuity because they bought Genuity Capital or something here in, on, on, in New York. So Tony Dwyer said the same thing. We get a couple of days of a massive relief as we are getting. And then we get to those technical levels that I showed you. And then we get a slam down. We are ready. There is nothing that can be thrown at us at Clue to Say Trading that we are not ready for. Now, are we going to pinpoint every single thing every minute? No. I'm giving you the broader picture. And as, act, as active traders, I'll be watching to see those signals because there's a lot of false breakdowns that happen in the midst of a reflex bounce. You all know that. Today was the ultimate false breakdown. We were down 500 frigging points. And we ended up positive. The VIX, always monitor. My charts, always monitor. Look at your screens, use your brains, put some money in and go with it. The VIX is the ultimate contrarian indicator. Even that fakes us out at times because it moves really fast. So the candles go from green, uh, red to green real fast. But there is a pattern to it. I'm not going to waste time explaining that to you all because I have spent enough time and energy all day long to put those charts out. So bottom line is, that's what I think. It's going to get up here and then it's going to fall. This is the head. This is the left shoulder. This is the right shoulder. This is the right shoulder. This is the right shoulder. So when you get into this massive head and shoulder type of patterns, of course, you're going to get a sell program at the right shoulder coming through. End of story. Now, let's take a look at the monthly. They're really zooming out now. Well, that's a QQQ. I like this a lot. The gap fill is imminent. It's already in there. Told you guys to buy it here. Told you guys to buy it here. And now the, uh, we can get up towards a 186 level. So those calls that you bought at 70 cents, 80 cents a dollar, they closed at a dollar 40 at the close or somewhere around there. That's 40% higher, if not 50%. You'll get 100 to 200% on it once we close this gap. Once we close this gap, we shall see what happens. But one step at a time. Futures are right now up seven and a half, e-mini futures. 
the final uh, technical chart that we're look we're going to be looking at today, uh, at least on the market, is the weekly chart here. Now, this weekly chart is pretty significant, and I'm sh and, and keen eyes can detect this. We have here this faint. This is a massive long tail reversal still red because it's a weekly and the weekly is still kind of pointing down right on the stochastics but we have entered back into the rising wedge that we fell out of right there let's zoom in there it's a very faint you guys can see this and remember this goes back to 2018 this is a massive rising wedge so all we basically did if you really want to think about the longer term picture we came in we are basically going through, we slipped out of the wedge, then we are now back in again. So if that's the case, the next move will be retesting the highs. This is for me, slightly, slightly multi-week basis. We could retest the highs before we create another massive pullback because the markets tend to move up on the upper wedge and bounce from the lower wedge. And that's a lot. We could even bust a move higher than that before we start to make that retest of the lower wedge again. This is telling me that the, that we are on a multi on a multi week basis. That this 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 is worrisome because this is still pointing down. So that means take advantage of those short term levels, three four hundred points that's coming in front of us, and then sit back uh questions or else i'm explaining so well there's no questions so feel free to ask me all right let's take a look at the e-minis here the e-minis this is the daily chart let's start up with the bottom internals we are starting to see a turn we haven't seen that on the macd we need to see this. We need the MACD histogram bar start to shrink. First signs of a sustained rally, not just a one, two day and then see you later. Remember, we are living in very, uh, very. Um, uh, this is the new normal. President Trump tweets anytime during the day, middle of the night, you name it. Can't control that. Comments out of China and stuff. That's kind of controllable because they do it through press releases and stuff. Okay. Fed more controllable because they do it through press releases and things like that. But if Fed governor interview says, "Nah, I don't want to raise rates," I mean, I'm gonna cut rates. What the hell are you talking about? Next thing in you know, the market will tumble 300 points. Bernanke, I mean, not Bernanke. Uh, Powell, good guy. Yeah, he gets beaten up by Donald like you know, like nobody's business. But honestly, I feel sorry for the guy. It doesn't matter. He's a strong guy. He's a patriot. He's an American. He's worked. You know, he's never done anything wrong. He'll do the right thing. A September rate cut is given. Is given. At this point, given all these dramatics in the in, in, in with the trade war and everything, and the slowdown in the European economy, look at gov. I don't want to even get into it tonight. That, I'll cover that on Sunday. Bond deals plummeted. I'll just show one chart. I did show it during the day. Just plummeted. We're at 1.6. You can get a 15-year mortgage for less than 3% or 3%. Think about that for a minute. So this hasn't turned yet, but I believe it is starting to. Let's look at the next indicator, McLaren Oscillator. McLaren oscillator is starting to is starting to move higher. It is still at minus 161. Remember, the longer it stays cheap, you can look at it two ways. It's it's a sign of weakness, or it, the market's giving you more time to buy things pretty cheap. So it depends how you look at it, right? Depends how you look at it. Because by the time the McLaren oscillator and uh, and the MACD turn like this. Things are going to be a heck of a lot more expensive, like Booking.com that I did not play because options were goddamn so high is up $140 after hours. You don't think Amazon can get back to $1,900? It'll jump 100 bucks in two days. How many times have we seen that? So, uh, uh, full stochastics, beautiful. Moving on. Definite buy signal. Now, next uh, 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 next one on the S&P, on the E-mini, same thing as S&P, heavy short coverage. See these candles? Big time. I mean, not candles, bars. Two and a half million 
contracts. Wow. That's wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, really, I'm, it amazes me. Remember, I'm just a student of the market, just like you all. Just a faster learner, maybe. So this is 29.34. Told you all. Same thing. This is where the markets will either get rejected or it's going to bust and move above that. Left shoulder, left shoulder, right shoulder, 29.68. 50 day moving average is the first major resistance. It's going to get there one way or the other. Last time this happened on June 3rd, it went up, went over the 50 day moving average, and there was three days of a minor sell. We call it bull flags. Walked you guys through it. Three days, you had a chance if you missed it here because you're too scared, which most traders are all the time. Um, three days of, of a minor bull flag, you mean consolidation, and then see you later. Don't make the same mistake again, ladies and gentlemen. These type of opportunities don't come around too often. It came here, December 24th. It came here, first week of March. It came here, first week of June, and it came here first week of August. God keeps on giving us opportunities and as dumb humans, we don't take it. So why should God, honestly, I don't want to be evangelist, but I'm telling you the truth. Why should God keep on giving you free gifts? Do you deserve it? If you do not take advantage of the opportunities given, think about it for a minute. Same thing. The market's giving you opportunity. My charts are giving you great opportunities. But if you sit around, twiddle your thumb, you don't deserve to make any money. I know it sounds harsh. I don't care. But um, so that's it. So the daily is looking good. And so let's take a look at the TNX. This explains the whole picture. This is the 10-year government bond deal. Now, you can, I, I can put a lot of lines and stuff on this, and I can tell you that the government bond deal is done going down. What we saw today at around 1.595, in my opinion, in my technical opinion, short term is an established bottom. 1.6595%, call it 1.6%, to hold money in U.S. government treasuries for 10 years. Hello? I mean, how ridiculous it is. But then you look at the ridiculousness in the rest of the world. Almost all of Europe is negative bond deals. They, they, you are paying them to hold your money. How do you like that? No wonder they're all sitting into U.S. treasuries, which is pushing the yield lower. Understand what I'm saying? The global money, I've explained this before, the global money, the big trillions of dollars, bumpy billion dollars, they are coming in in a flash into the U.S. government bond market, let's call it this way, the 10-year government bond, because they can at least earn 1.684% at the close. I'm just getting that number right. Where is this one? I need it. The TNX is, uh, yeah, at 1.684% instead of losing half a percent. Think about that for a minute. Not half a percent, maybe 0.1 percent, leaving it in European sovereign bonds or treasury bonds. Very simple. That's one of the main reasons. It's called flight to safety. Safe haven buying is the reason why. Now, from a technical basis, we apply the same principles. We have a falling wedge here. Let me draw this out. We have a falling wedge on the stochastics. We have done this before. We are going to basically break out of the wedge. That means the bond deals are going to climb to somewhere close to two. If we climb somewhere close to 2% on the U.S. government bond deals, you are going to see this market hit 3,000 S&P again. However, we are the start of that. I'm not a bond expert. I'm just re looking at the chart. There's a gap fill here around 1.8%. We get to 1.8%. We are going to hit 2960, 2950, those levels on the S&P 500. In other words, the market will go up four to 500 points as the, this is directly correlated with it. This is a macroeconomic game. I'm explaining to you in simple English. All right? The Chinese yuan fix against the US dollar, 10-year government bond deals, and the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average asset correlation. We want bond deals higher. This is still plunging. 
no no signs of a reversal this needs to reverse this has already started to do so this is starting to do so which is a mclaren oscillator so bottom line is when you see a plunge like this let me try to zoom in hold on when you see a plunge like this on u.s government bond deals like this is just a collapse right this is a stock just cratering if you want to look at it that way you are inevitably and this is all happened within five days. One, two, three, four, five. Today was the sixth day where we got a beautiful hammer reversal or a block reversal. So you fall from 2.04. And please, somebody tell me, you fall, fall from 2.04 to 1.595. That's a drop of 0.45 or 0.445. 2.04. If this was a stock, let's say this is a stock at $20, okay? I'm just keeping it simple. And remember, when you do the bond deal, it's not 20%. I know there's a lot of uh, very, you know, most Americans are very ignorant about basic economics. I mean, believe me, it's a, it's a sad commentary, but I've always complained about that, right? Um, like they ask these uh, uh, big sports guys. There are some of them are really smart. Like, hey, what's the Federal Reserve? Oh, you mean the FBI? I'm like, holy shit. Why shouldn't the Chinese just eat us for breakfast? I mean, how stupid are we? You know, you say budget deficit, nobody even knows what the heck it means, all right? So uh, so let's not claim that, you know, most uh, people out there, and that's their fault, and it's nobody's fault. You know, you've got to teach yourself to be a little bit smarter. So bottom line is, if something, if a 20, so it's not 20%, it's 2.043%. You move the decimal to the left. So if you move, but let's look at this in a simple lesson. I want you guys to answer, please. So if it, let's let's say this is a twenty dollar stock, okay? This is where we were five days ago, and the stock plummets down to fifteen dollars and ninety five cents. What percentage drop is that, roughly? Twenty five percent. I I can hear you. Go ahead. Can you toggle your mic and tell me or type it in? Twenty five percent. Yeah, exactly. So it's roughly about a twenty two percent drop. Okay, exactly. So it's it's so the bond deals plummeted 22 freaking percent from two per two uh 2.04 percent to thing. If you have a stock that plummeted 22 percent, you'd be just losing your head. Well, the bond market lost their head when the eel in the you know uh the way when it felt like that, that's it collapse. That's why the markets collapse too. Just keep that in mind. And in the meantime, bond prices went through the roof because remember, yield prices go higher when bond deals go lower. I've explained this many times before. That's simple. It's an inverse correlation. Yields collapsed and bond prices went nuts. So bond prices are right now very overvalued in a big way. And bond deals are, and everything is reversion to the mean. Use the same thing, 50 day moving average, Reversion to the mean. This red line is not a 50-day moving average. That's a Bollinger. This red line is the 50-day moving average. It veered way off its path. So it's going to try to get back to the norm. Simple. That's going to help the markets gain a footing as it's doing already. Right now, E-mini futures are up nine. So that's it for enough of the markets and all that stuff. Roku, we got a winner. Told you guys. Hope you guys bought it. If you didn't, you still have a chance to buy it tomorrow. This stock is going a lot higher. The numbers were phenomenal. So here is Roku. I walked you guys all through this chart in a big way. Forget about looking at the chart. Let's look at the internals. This was before tonight's earnings where the stock is up about $15. 15 and a half. Told you guys to buy the 104, 105, 106. Any one of them. Hey, just pick your poison. You're up a gazillion points on that. Okay. So, Roku Daily is stochastics are raring to go. So, now, as of what happened tonight, the stochastics have crossed over. Unless they open up here, which they won't yet because this is a daily, the stock is a buy. The MACDs were kind of fluctuating, right? If they once they turn around, they're going to hit those five, six level. It's a buy. So unless it gets super overbought and the stochastics over 80, it is a buy. 
Just because the stock goes up 15 bucks doesn't mean it's overvalued. It's what the internals tell us. So saying all that, let's take a look at the, come on, come on. Let's take a look at um, the picture of Roku here. At this point, as we speak, the stock is here, exactly where I said it's gonna go. It's at 113, I believe it closed around 113.48. So it's somewhere around here, the previous high. Now, there will be back and forth, fast profit taking and all that stuff that happens in the first 10 minutes of trading. We know that, right? I'll explain to you on Sunday about the logistics of option stuff, which if you guys are real traders and you trade options, you know how it is. This, e, this GH was a monster winner today. Paid like a buck 50, two bucks on this hundred, uh, the hundred calls. <coughs> they closed around two yesterday because the stock was moving up three bucks before the earnings. They went to 12. But in the morning, if you tried to sell it, they smashed it down from the options from eight to four. <laughs> eight to four, okay, within 10 minutes, because that's what these hedge funds and these bastards do. Excuse my French. All right. It opened up at eight and change. It opened up at 760, it ran up to about eight for about three minutes. Then it, it dropped it to four, four and change. And then they ran it up to $12 during the day. And this happens a lot with a lot of stocks. So Roku is the same thing. Boom, options will be up. Take a deep breath, step away. Let them jostle around. If the charts are still moving higher, they'll move those options higher, but they will give you the worst possible price first thing when you try to sell it after 9.30. Now, unless the options open up really big, then you don't worry about that. Or if you have a few calls, let's say you have two or four or five, some people have 10, then of course you take down a bunch of them, leave one or two in there. But looking at this chart here and this acceleration channel, uh, we are looking at the stock at 118, right there, the dotted line. And God help us if it gets to the upper end of the channel, which I don't think is going to happen tomorrow, but I have no idea either because Roku is more than 10% shorted. <clears throat> I hope there's a monster short squeeze, which brings the stock up to 120. That would be beautiful. That would be beautiful. And that would be the first level of major resistance, yep, based on, based on this uh, acceleration channel. And if it busts a move from here, you can rest assured Roku will go 130 very soon. Very soon. And I really hope some of you have it. Or you can still get into it tomorrow. Weight Watchers. I didn't play the earnings. Still made a crap load of money just asking guys to buy it. Because I looked at this chart, I'm like, wow. Look at this. This is your daily chart. This is your Fibonacci retracements going all the way back to um, August of 2018. That's a long time, ladies and gentlemen. This baby is no longer a fat, obese, you know, useless bum. I shouldn't say, if, you know, everyone's as fat and obese as a useless bum, but seriously, like they lost weight. They're running. They are on a sprint right now. They're out there trying out for the triathlon. God forbid if this stock now has closed the gap around here at $30. Calls are cheap. Told you guys to buy it at a buck and change. They went well above two. All right? And that's after the fact. Imagine if we had bought it yesterday. So, it, so that's another thing I want to point out to all of you. Just because we don't have a stock before earnings, all of a sudden, it doesn't mean it's dead. And especially when you have this much room to move. Just to get to the 50 fib, it's $61. I'm not even pushing it that far. How about the 23.6 fib? That's 40, that's $37. The stock goes up $7, you'll feel like a multimillionaire. We're already up on that more than 50%. So this type of stuff excites me because now it's changed to turn the corner. It looks like they not only, you know, the, the shorts are covering. They had a terrific earning speed. Uh, I didn't go through the numbers and stuff. Who cares? I'm following the chart. Uh, we are uh, this is one thing I noticed on the daily. So this is a swing trade, period. That's it, swing trade. We saw a sharp move on the MACD as well as 
And these are things that you guys can just sit on it. Look at this. The MACD exploded higher and created the first green can, uh, can uh, bar. Look at the volume. Look at the stows. Do I need to say more? Now, will it go back and forth a little bit? Maybe a buck or two, this and that? Yes, of course. Of course, that's normal. But I'm saying the general direction of this stock is pretty significant. It's pretty significant. Now it's attacking the 200-day moving average. It busted through the 50, the 34, the 150. That's saying signs of real strength. That's it. We have TTD coming up. This is a monster. Only thing I don't like about this, the frigging options are real expensive. If I want to buy in the money, I got to pay for one contract. I got to pay more than a thousand bucks. I'm like, come on. But this is going to move. This is a monster. This is a monster stock. Given this is trade desk, we already made a crap load of money on it. All right? When the stock exploded. This is the programmatic trading. This was brought to my attention by a very loyal member who actually is in, the, in, in, the, in, in that type of business many, many quarters ago. So the bottom line is this is serious. It can easily go back to 280. That's 23 points. So how you manage the options and stuff, you got to figure out because these are, you know, maybe you just say, okay, fine, I'm buying one. That's the best way to do it, I guess, like close to the money. I don't see too much downside on the stock. The stock is unknown to most traders. It is a very powerful company. They're working with Amazon. They provide Google's huge earning speed was primarily because of these guys, the programmatic trading and online ads and all that stuff. They're doing digital ads for Amazon TV, Fire Stick and all that. From what I read, that's the day that the stock exploded. If you guys all remember, it was a great day. And then we pull back a little bit. All right, one or two questions and I'm done. It's 10.16, gotta wake up real early tomorrow. Well, I normally wake up around that time anyway. But um, Jody, Mike, Sue. Sue, you don't have any questions? Any, um, thoughts, on, any thoughts on gold? I can pull up gold, but I haven't been trading it. I know it's been going higher a lot. I personally think gold is a frigging short at this point. That's my opinion. I see an inverted hammer. I'm seeing, I see a lot of people so excited about gold because the doomsday scenario callers that everything is finished. We're going into a nuclear war with China, blah, 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 blah. Everyone's running into safe haven. Here's my direct answer to gold. Gold is moving with treasury bonds. They're called safe haven buying. Gold and those safe haven buying is going to come to an end. It will come to an end. Be unless we have another major flare up, gold is not a big bet. I see an inverted hammer on the daily. I believe gold will come down to about 138, 137, at least using the Spider Gold Trust. And at this point, I would be a buyer of gold once it hits these levels, just the way it did here. Do I think gold has been a great hedge? I personally don't think so. But it is being bought for a simple reason. We are devaluing currencies across the globe. So that why, that's why gold is a hedge. So uh, with ultra low interest rates too, yes. But here is the thing, Mike. Ultra low interest rates are not going to last here for reasons I just explained 15 minutes ago. Because U.S. economic growth will be automatically pushed up as these ultra low interest rates get filtered into the U.S. economic system over the next couple of months. The Fed doesn't have to cut rates. The market has cut rates for the Federal Reserve Government of America. I mean, Federal Reserve, uh, you know, has cut rates. The markets to cut the rates for them. You know, Donald can scream and shout and toss and turn in bed. Seen screaming at Powell, which, you know, I thoroughly disagree with. And, uh, and uh, but it doesn't matter. Rates are already low. Gold is still a good hedge. I'm not a fan of it. That's all. And I missed this trade, so I admit that. Uh, Sue, any questions? Jody, any questions? No, I'm good, Frank. There, oh, there you go, loud and clear. Futures are up 650. Everything's been explained. Thank you for attending. Say a prayer for my little doggy. He should be fine. 
Uh, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. And if I'm running a little bit late, I'll tweet out there. Just manage it. Follow those charts and everything. It's already there. And another huge reminder to everybody, you want to be a little bit more in tune with the market. You want to make a little few extra dollars instead of losing most of the time. Screenshot my charts. Keep them somewhere so you can track it on your own computers or iPhones or any other mobile device. On that note, God bless you all. We're in this game together. Let's just make it happen. Good night.